Hello everyone, my name is Simone Feast and I'm a sophomore at Queen's University of Charlotte. And today I will be interviewing Veronica Styron. Veronica is a project estimator at Atlas Floors. Atlas Floors is a member of the NWFA. NWFA stands for National Wood Flooring Association and it is a nonprofit trade association representing all segments of the hardwood flooring industry, including manufacturers, distributors, retailers, installers, importers, slash exporters, inspectors, and consultants. Hello, Veronica, how are you today? Hi, Simone, I'm doing great. How about yourself? Good, thank you. Could you describe what your typical workday entails and what was your first few years in this career like? Sure, so um, a typical workday usually starts out early in the morning um, because usually uh, service calls start around eight. Uh, we have to be starting to prepare around six. So typically we get into the office warehouse around six, that way we can get our vans ready for tools and supplies. And uh, the early morning thing used to scare me, especially because I was like, oh, I'm not a morning person. This is not for me. Supplies <laughs> that you get off at three, you're like, it's not. <laughs> yes. Is, is a beautiful thing. So you get to enjoy more of the daytime than, you know, a lot of other um, industries will allow you. So it, it works out pretty well with that kind of balance. Um, typically, once we get our um, trucks out on the road and we get our crews to projects, um, you'll see me floating around from project to project, as well as uh, meeting with new customers, designers, architects to um, look at new projects and kind of measure those and get a feel for what they're looking for. Um, Typically in between that and driving stops, uh, I'll get phone calls from crews saying, you know, these are the stain colors we picked, you know, they picked, can you get these supplies here for us? So uh, a lot of my day is spent on the phone, a majority of the day, um, you know, calling distributors to get pricing for materials as well as, hey, can you deliver stain and finish um, to this project? So there's a lot of moving parts to kind of make things flow um, and it takes a lot. And they, uh, there's a saying in the industry that you're either on the phone or you're on the floor. So <laughs> sometimes uh, you'd rather be on the floor, but <laughs> it, it's a lot of fun. And uh, there's, it's definitely a faster paced industry because um, so much of it, you know, you, if you don't prepare properly, you can lose a lot of time quickly. And sometimes that can be kind of, you know, frightening to people, but you know, it's, it's not, um, it, it's not, it's not, it's definitely enjoyable because it keeps you busy all day. It's not like you're sitting and you're just like twiddling your thumbs. You're just so busy. The day just goes so fast and you feel, uh, you feel accomplished at the end of the day. That's for sure. Because you, you can get a lot done while you're on the go. Thank you so much. Now, what was your first few years um, in this career like? Is it different from what you do now or is it pretty much the same? Totally different. <laughs> so, um, technology is a beautiful thing. Um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, it's the downfall of, you know, the future. But the thing is, is that um, wood flooring historically is uh, passed down from generation to generation in families. It's not necessarily something where they've always had like, hey, this um, trade school is doing wood floor only classes, you know, because it's its own science within itself. Um, and that was kind of the, the difficult part for me is that it's a family business that I've been around my whole life. Uh, however, I was always like, no, thanks. Never. <laughs> um, once technology started reaching to the trades, you know, these guys used to carry their tools in like little wooden boxes and catch a trolley to work, you know, <laughs> and now they have their own vans and, you know, everything has wheels and vacuum. <laughs> It's amazing to see technology hit the trades that way because now the guys are using automatic nailers and all of these things that support uh, the longevity of the, the craftsmen as well. And you don't see that uh, because it's, you know, it's just starting to trickle into the trades. And the thing is, is it's like, 
learning from those guys, you had to ride, you had to ride around in a, in a truck and, and just basically follow somebody and kind of understand, like, ask them, why would we do that? And why would we do that? And now because technology is so amazing, um, we have the opportunity to do online learning where they can make videos, show us, give us, you know, downloadable programs that we can print out to reference. And, um, it's, it feels like the whole industry, like fast forwarded on the last Mm -hmm. end. Back in, you know, 2012, when I first got back into it, I was like, no way, no way, you know, (laughs) really made it uh, that much more enjoyable because you just get so much more freedom uh, that we didn't have before, you know, so that's, that's one of the great things about that. Thank you so much. I loved your answer. (laughs) And I love how you uh, also explained the evolution of technology and how that impacted, you know, your career, because that's very important because technology will be with us forever. So everything is going to look like a beeper in five years. So (laughs) (laughs) I'm excited, but also a little bit, you know, nervous to see how, you know, technology will impact the future. (laughs) Um, My next question for you is what high school courses or college courses have you found to be the most applicable for your occupation or what courses do you wish you should have taken? Okay, so um, it's kind of surprising because I, I, I used to not be that great at math. Um, and I was like, just the basics, you know, basic math, basic algebra. And um, that's pretty much the majority of what you need to know for our industry. Now we have different scenarios and patterns in the floor. So you need to know formulas. But um, when I was in high school, they were still preaching the old, you'll never have a calculator in your pocket, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's on you. Cause I do. <laughs> yes. it, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun because, you know, back then, and I don't blame them for being a little bit grouchy about that, but it's like, you know, technology. So um, it's much easier to work on the go um, versus having to be stationary in an office because of that. Um, the classes I took in high school, uh, uh, most people call them wood shop, but at my high school, they called it imagination factory. And they just got to understand all the tools, uh, just so you knew like, Hey, whatever you could think of, you can build, you know? And, um, that was pretty critical in me kind of understanding a lot of concepts when it comes to construction. So that was helpful. Um, the classes that I think I wish I would have taken and, once again, technology, we just didn't have uh, the same opportunity was um, there's a lot of CAD programs where they do the, you know, the drawings online. You can do all of that architectural stuff right at the tip of your hands on an iPad. And um, I think the class that we had was like mechanical drawing where you had to use like a ruler and that's all you had. And you had to do the whole drawing just by pencil. And I know that that's still an art form, but you know, it's, not very useful. Right. <laughs> yes. And I'm sure that took a lot of time to do. Yeah. A lot of, a lot <laughs> of energy, you know, and you're just, I can understand it. And it makes it a lot easier to work within the programs now, but back then we just did not have the same opportunity because technology was just not there yet. So um, definitely as long as you kind of get the basic mathematics, um, you know, and then you kind of, it's a, it's a lot of your imagination involved as well. So Uh, It's pretty cool. But yeah, those are definitely the top, top ones. But yeah, the CAD is, CAD is where it's at for sure. Thank you so much. My next question is, um, what part-time jobs, apprenticeships, or internships, and extracurricular activities would best prepare you for this occupation? So um, it's one of those interesting things that, um, you know, anybody can really get involved in this industry. Mm -hmm. And I think that the important part that people recognize is that um, as long as you have like a heart of service and you understand that people are contacting you because they have a vision for their own home, you know, their sanction and um, people don't take that lightly. So as long as you take that uh, on a serious note and you can be real like human to human with them about it, um, there's a lot of flexibility within that, you know, that momentum. Um, I think that that's really you know, and to say a heart of service, there's so many, uh, you know, jobs that that could start with. And it's, and it's kind of, you know, how do I say it? It's like, um, 
uh, there's just so many different opportunities. This is what I try to mean. It's like um, some people call you and they say, I've always dreamed of doing this floor for my parents' home and I have the money and I want to do it. So, you know, you're like, let's do exactly what you're thinking. And then um, there's other people where they have like storm damage or a tornado. Like I have somebody uh, that I just met with this week that a tornado hit their house. So, you know, there's a long process that goes in with that. And um, there's just so many opportunities because of what we do. And it's kind of interesting because I know uh, kids that are in college right now to go to uh, to get a degree in architecture. And on the summers, they come into town because this is where they're from and they'll just help out doing like labor and demos. And they're like, I could, you know, potentially earn more here just doing this than I would my first year out. And that's not to discount the architectural uh, community, just that when you have to start where you have to start there, you know, there's just a lot going on and you'd have to, you know, follow that kind of learning path as well. So, um, uh, it's kind of tough, you know, there's uh, for people who are really good at accounting and stuff like that. That's the other thing is that there's so many opportunities. It's not just somebody that's going to be installing or sanding the wood floors. We have, you know, scientists because of the polymers. We have, you know, people that just love, they love doing Excel sheets for some reason, but <laughs> bless them because, hey, yeah. it, it to help the the machine you know keep going you know well-oiled machine it's just it's amazing how much it lifts everybody up so um it just depends on what somebody's interest is but there's literally an opportunity for everybody in this industry wow i love that um what are the benefits of being a member of the nwfa so um the really cool thing um with the nwfa is like i said we when I first started, uh, the NWFA pretty much did regional training programs and they would invite everybody to come in. And um, typically back then they would have everybody fly in from out of the country or not from all over the country. The tough thing about that is, is that um, it takes time for you. You usually have to take like a week off in order to travel there. And sometimes it's not easy to do that because, you know, your work is based on what you put out. So um, sometimes that was a little bit challenging. The NWFA definitely uh, changed their uh, changed their course a little bit. And they created the NWFA University, which gave us the opportunity to learn from home. And then once you had the opportunity to learn from home, you could also take those skills to now those regional training programs you know, they, they do multiple trainings per year in different locations that are closer to people. So instead of taking a week off, you only have to take two days off and then you're working with the trainer to hone in on those skills. And you're just taking so much more from it because it's not all jammed into, um, you know, a four day session where you're like two days after you're like, I wish I would have asked that. I wish I was (laughs) right. They really engaged with uh, the younger generations, which was important because, you know, it, there's a big deficit of people who are retiring from our industry uh, and then the people who are coming in. And that's just all across the board when it comes to the trades. So um, they really, really did an incredible job when it comes to the education programs. Um, And uh, when you do those programs, I think one of the best parts about the NWFA is that you realize that you're not the only one out there hitting those struggles. You know, some, uh, you know, like I I worked in a restaurant growing up and sometimes the best time of the night was when you were rolling silverware at the end of the night and talking with your coworkers, you know, and sometimes when you're by yourself, you know, you don't always have that opportunity to talk with, uh, you know, people who are doing exactly what you're doing. So when you get there and you, you're talking with everybody, you feel, you feel part of a family and it really, really engaging and um, it builds you up. It makes you feel very empowered. So it's definitely a cool uh, organization to be part of. That sounds amazing. Can you tell me a little bit more about the networking or educational opportunities offered by the NWFA? I know you touched on it uh, briefly in my uh, previous question, but I would just love if you would expound a little bit more about the different opportunities someone um, can gain from being a part of the NWFA. Definitely. So um, the cool thing is, is like I said, um, with these uh, regional training programs that they have, my first one that I went to uh, I was, I knew nobody and uh, I just real quiet and everybody was like, you want to try this machine? And, you know, as soon as I went in and was like, rrr, rrr, 
they were like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> they saw that, you know, they were like, okay, like she knows what she's doing. Then you know, because of, like I said, the deficit, a lot of these companies, so within the NWFA, there's a lot of organizations that are also part of it, um, like the manufacturers of the products that we use. And those manufacturers recognized early on that there's a problem because we don't have a lot of the younger generations involved yet. Um, and the thing is, is that like um, NWFA will do training programs, but also they have something called uh, Partners in Education. And it's a, basically a team of all of those manufacturers. I've been invited to some of the coolest programs uh, to see this stuff in action. For example, like um, I got invited to go to Canada to go see the machine that will actually take a tree trunk and turn it into wood flooring within like seconds. And you're just like, wow, wow. And um, that was really cool. And then in the same swing, you know, you just start meeting more people and then they realize, hey, like you're passionate about this. And, um, you know, they're like, you should try, you know, signing up for this. And then uh, that same year, I got invited to go to Germany to go, uh, yeah, to go walk the plant of um, the family who invented uh, the belt sander, which we use to sand floors. So that's what I mean when I say that historically, it's always been a family handed down uh, trade. And so you feel like you're part of this big family and everybody's like, hey, check this out. You should come see this, you know, and everybody. Excited. And uh, it's a lot of fun because, you know, you feel like nerds, but then you're like, this is cool. <laughs> like, so it's a lot of fun. And um, I know that uh, not those, those opportunities aren't always available, you know, when you're in other trades, for example, you know, like, uh, like HVAC and stuff like that and plumbing, they're not like, Hey, come, you know, come meet where the first I love this uh, sink for us or something, something like that. <laughs> Wow, I love that so much. And I love how you all are like a huge family. And that's just very, very important. Um, thank you so much. Now, what did you find the most surprising about this career? To be honest with you, like I knew that it was going to be a male dominated industry. Um, mm -hmm. Always known that. I just always knew that the, the girls were always in the office and that the guys were. Um, I can't sit still at a desk personally. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm a very on the go kind of girl. And uh, when I went out into the field, you know, I had this hesitation, like, are they going to respect me? Are they going to take me seriously? Or, you know, are they, uh, you know, are they going to be fair to me? And um, surprisingly, the men in our, in our industry are just, they get, they get so excited when they see like, they're like, oh yeah, because like, you know, you, you know, your stuff, they're like, right. All right. I like that. You know? <laughs> I was so surprised at how welcoming um, this industry was to females who are trying to step out and kind of, you know, create new grounds for other opportunities for others to elevate themselves. And, you know, if you see somebody else doing it, you're like, Hey, I can do that as well. So, you know, it's definitely one of those things that was intimidating at first, but once you got over that, that your own anxiety of it, it was definitely, it's, it feels like I have like a thousand brothers, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's amazing. And I'm glad they respect you because you're deserving of their respect. So that's right. a great thing. You're so welcome. My last question for you today is, is there anything else you would like to add or think that will help um, someone considering this occupation? Um, yeah. So the thing is, is that, um, how do I say this? Um, okay. I believe that uh, all of us have uh, like a special, something special that we're good at, you know, and it doesn't have to be that you're good at, you know, sanding wood floors or installing them or selling wood floors or talking to people. It's, you know, we all have uh, these special talents and it's very intimidating uh, when you think that, um, how do I say this? Uh, it's like everybody has talent, but not everybody has the same opportunity. And I feel like the NWFA has, has offered so many more opportunities than I, than I could have ever imagined. And I know that those opportunities would be absolutely handed out to anybody interested because um, it's one of those things where if you show, you know, if you, it's not, I have to do this. It's, I get to do this. You know, you get to do really cool 
projects, you know, historical projects. And, and you kind of nerd out because you're like, oh, like I'm helping out with this project. <laughs> yeah. Super cool. <laughs> and it, it makes you excited because, you know, when you tell people what you do, they're like, show me, let me see what you do. <laughs> That's one of the things is that uh, it makes you feel good at the end of the day because you're making a difference in people's homes, whether it's their house was torn by a flood or mold or tornado, or it's their dream home and they want these floors from this barn that they took down in Pennsylvania. You know, there's just an endless amount of creativity that comes into this industry that really you don't see in other industries where that creativity, but also that kind of efficiency is just, it goes hand in hand and it plays well. And um, it's very inviting to the younger generation because um, we like to do things the, the easy way, the more efficient way, not necessarily, you know, the hard way, which was the old way. So it's a big window for the younger generation to, to come into. And um, I, I'm just so excited because it's, it's night and day from what it was back when we first got, when I first got into it. So um, if it's something that interests you, it doesn't even have to be that you'd be out doing the floors. Like I said, if you want to help out and you're in the office and you're great at support and customer uh, experiences, stuff like that, even marketing is huge for our industry. It's just one of those things. Like I said, there's so many opportunities for everybody's talent that it's, it's just one of those things, the gift that keeps on giving. So it's really, really incredible how they've changed that over the years. Thank you so much for that. You make me want to join the uh, NWFA. I mean, because I can just see your passion, your excitement. And that's amazing too, because I can tell you truly, truly love what you do. And not a lot of people can say that. And so I just thank you so much for your advice. It's much appreciated. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yes, we am. Um, thank you again, Veronica, for agreeing to meet with me today. And thank you all for joining us. And if you want to learn more about the NWFA, visit the NWFAQ career page to find out more. Until next time, have a great week. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you, Simone. Thank you.